once you do calculate the net asset then whatever is the net asset you calculate 5% of that and that you will add as the goodwill when you take it for purchase consideration you take the agreed values but when you are transferring to realization account it will be always at the balance sheet values the balance sheet of star limited is prepared accordance with the revised schedule 6 of the companies act of 1956 Hello everyone I'm Purnima faculty in the department of commerce and management Vidyashram Pasnit College Temple of Excellence Mysore I welcome you all to the session in this session we'll be have working some more problems on amalgamation in the nature of purchase now here of the following are the balance sheets of sun limited and moon limited as on 31st march 2020 so we have the shareholders fund share capital 5 lakhs of sun limited moon limited 3 lakhs reserves and surplus general reserve 1 lakh insurance fund 70000 profit and loss account 30000 then we have long term borrowings 1 lakh trade creditors 50000 30000 epf 15000 workman profit sharing fund 10000 then next we have the assets here in the assets buildings 1 lakh 50 machinery 5 lakh 50 2 lakh 50 stock in trade 80000 40000 Trade receivable seventy thousand. Uh, after provision for bad debts, we are having forty five thousand. Then cash fifteen thousand five thousand. Total eight lakh sixty five thousand three lakh forty thousand. Now the additional information here. The Sun Limited and Moon Limited have agreed to amalgamate and form a new company called Star Limited with an authorized capital of rupees twenty lakhs in shares of rupees hundred each. which has agreed to take over the assets and liabilities on april 1st 2020 so there is a new company called star limited which has been formed so it has agreed to take over the assets of the sun limited and the moon limited the assets of the sun limited are taken over at a reduced valuation of 10% with the exception of buildings which are accepted at book value now this uh, uh, sun limited they agreed to take over the uh, all the assets but assets are taken over at a 10% reduced valuation only with the exception of buildings you don't need to reduce all other assets you have to reduce 10% so which are accepted at book value both the companies are to receive 5% of the net valuation of the respective business as goodwill so once you do calculate the net asset then whatever is the net asset you calculate 5% of that and that you will add as the goodwill the entire purchase price is paid by star limited in fully paid equity shares of rupees 100 each so give journal entries to close the books of accounts of sun limited and moon limited make opening entries in the books of star limited also prepare the opening balance sheet of star limited as on 1st april 2020 so this is the problem we have so whenever we are given a problem on amalgamation the first thing will be the calculation of purchase consideration so first you calculate the purchase consideration and then you just have to pass the general entries now i'll just show you the slide relating to calculation of purchase consideration so here we have the calculation of purchase consideration so total amount of shares given to sun limited and moon limited by way of purchase consideration is not given so they have said that the purchase consideration will be paid in the form of shares but what is the number of shares and what is the amount what is the value of the share that is not given so purchase consideration cannot be calculated on the payment basis so if they uh, if it is on a payment basis so all the details will be specified neatly but in the problem they have not told anything about the payment so it has to be calculated on the basis of net assets taken over by star limited purchase consideration is calculated as follows so we follow the net asset method here so calculation of purchase consideration so agreed value of assets taken over buildings 1 lakh 50000 so there is no change in the value of buildings but all other assets it will be reduced by 10% next machinery 4 lakh 95000 so 5 lakh 50000 minus 10% 55000 you get 4 lakh 95000 then stock 80000 minus 10% 
72,000 debtor, 70,000 minus 10%, 63,000. Cash, there will not be any change. It is 15,000. Then, next will be Moon Limited. Machinery, 250. It is as it is. So, whatever is in the balance sheet, you write the same amount for the purchase consideration. So, when you add the total, we get 7,95,000. Here for Moon Limited, we are getting 3,45,000. Then, next, less value of liabilities taken over. 10% debentures, 1 lakh. Trade creditors, 50,000, 40,000. EPF, Employee Provident Fund, it is a liability to be paid to the employees, 15,000. Then, Provision for doubtful debts. Only for Moon Limited there is a provision. So we take into consideration. So the total liability is taken over is 1,65,045,000. So when you reduce, so when you deduct the liabilities from the assets, so 7,95,000 minus 1,65,000, I get the balance as 6,30,000. Here I am getting the balance as 3 lakhs. Now, they have also told that goodwill is being paid by the purchasing company. So, what is the goodwill? Add 5% on net asset. Goodwill is, so what is the net asset here? 6 lakhs 30,000. 6 lakhs 30,000 into 5%. So, into 5% will be 31,500 and here also it will be 15,000. So you add both, you get 6,61,500 and here it is 3,15,000. So the number of equity shares issued by Star Limited, the total purchase consideration is 6,61,500 and 3,15,000. The total is 9,76,500. The equity shares of Star Limited are of rupees 100 each. So, the total number of equity shares issued in settlement of purchase consideration is, so 9,75,000 divided by 100, we get 9,765, 9,76,500 divided by 100. So, 9,765 equity shares are issued as purchase consideration. So, we have calculated the purchase consideration value of Sun Limited and Moon Limited. Now we go to the journal entries. Now uh, we have the journal entries in the books of Sun Limited. First will be journal entries in the books of Sun Limited. So whatever the entries are there, whatever the uh, uh, assets are there, if it is taken over by the purchasing company, all those assets should be transferred to debit side of the realization account. So realization account debtor, 8,65,000. If you can remember the purchase consideration, so 8,65,000, two buildings, 1,50. So you remember that when you are taking the assets to the realization account, it will be always in the balance sheet value balance sheet values not the agreed values but when you take it for purchase consideration you take the agreed values but when you are transferring to realization account it will be always at the balance sheet values so being transfer of assets to realization account then the, if they say that the business is taken over it means that assets and liabilities are taken over by the purchasing company so I am passing an entry for the uh, transfer of liabilities to realization account 10% debentures account debtor 1 lakh trade creditors account debtor 50,000 employee provident fund account debtor 15,000 to realization account 1 lakh 60,000 because uh, being liabilities transferred to realization account. Then the next uh, entry will be for purchase consideration due star limited account data. So this is the purchase consideration we have already calculated. Then two realization accounts 6,61,500 being purchase consideration due. Then the next one will be so when you are preparing the realization account, so it will be all assets on the debit side, 
all the liabilities on the credit side. Now, if you can see here, the total asset value is 8,65,000 and the liabilities value is 1,65,000. Then next we have it on the credit side. We write star limited account debtor to realization account. So the realization, so it will be by star limited 6,61,500. So whatever is the purchase consideration payable that you write on the credit side, then add both of this. Whatever is the answer, so you will know that you add the uh, credit side total and the debit side. So compare, then you will know whether it is a loss or a profit. So here it is 6,61,500. Then we have a loss on realization. So equity shareholders account debtor 38,500. So here 8,65,000. So it will be by shareholders account. 38,500. So if it is a loss, it will come on the credit side. If it is a profit, you will get it on the debit side. So 38,500. So next entry will be equity shares in star limited account debtor 661500 to star limited account 661500 being receipt of purchase consideration. So purchase consideration has been paid by star limited in the form of equity shares. Now the next one will be uh, we will have to transfer all the reserves in the balance sheet to the shareholders account. So equity share capital account debtor 5 lakhs, general reserve account debtor 1 lakh, insurance fund account debtor 70,000, profit and loss account debtor 30,000, two equity shareholders account 7 lakhs. So whatever is the funds, whatever is the reserves which are there in the balance sheet that has to be transferred to equity shareholders account. So being transfer of share capital, accumulated profits and reserves to equity shareholders account. Then equity shareholders account debtor uh, 6,61,500 to equity shares in star limited 6,61,500. Now the purchase consideration which is payable by the purchasing company, it will be paid to the equity shareholders. So I am writing equity shareholders account debtor to equity shares in star limited. Then, so next entry will be journal entries in the books of Moon Limited. Now Moon Limited also we have to close the books of accounts and then we have to see if there is a loss or profit on realization and then we have to transfer all the reserves to the shareholders account. Then, so journal entries here, realization account debtor 3,45,000. So realization account I write it here. So here you can see that machinery 2,50,000 to stock account, to debtors account, to cash account. So on the debit side, total assets worth 3,45,000 has been transferred. Then on the credit side, trade creditors account 30,000, provision for debtors 5,000, workman profit sharing fund. So it is 45,000. So all the liabilities are transferred to the realization account credit side. So on the debit side, I have the assets. So being liabilities transferred to realization account. Then next for purchase consideration due. So the star limited has paid a purchase consideration of 3,15,000. So this I'll write here in realization account debit side, 3,45,000 credit side again 45,000 and again 3,15,000. So 3,15,000. So what will be the total here? It will be approximately 3,60,000 will be the total of the credit side. Here, it, here also I write 3,60,000. So the difference in the amount uh, this 15,000 that is the profit on realization. So whatever is the profit on realization that will be transferred to equity shareholders account. So that is 15,000. So realization account debtor 15,000 
to equity shareholders account 15,000 being profit on realization transferred. So there is a profit for Moon Company, but there is a loss for the Sun Company. Then equity shares in Star Limited account debtor 350,000 to Star Limited account 350,000 being receipt of purchase consideration. Then the next one, we have to transfer the capital and reserves to equity shareholders account, share capital account at 3 lakhs to equity shareholders account 3 lakhs as there are no other funds in Moon Limited. So we just transfer only the capital. Then equity shareholders account at 3 lakh 50,000 to equity shares in Star Limited 3 lakh 50,000 being final payment made to equity shareholders. So this is the final payment made by the Star Limited to the Moon Limited. Then journal entries in the books of Star Limited. Now we have closed the books of accounts of Sun Limited, Moon Limited. Now we have to open the books of Star Limited which is the purchasing company. So journal entries in the books of Star Limited. Business purchase account debtor 9,76,500. So this is the total value of both the businesses. So Sun Limited and Moon Limited together it is 9,76,500. So I am writing 9,76,500. To liquidator of Sun Limited 6,61,500. To liquidator of Moon Limited, 3,15,000. Now the liquidator is the person who sells all the assets and pays off the liabilities. Now we have two liquidators here. So one liquidator of Sun Limited, other one of the Moon Limited. Being acquisition of business of Sun Limited and Moon Limited. So this is the entry. Then next one will be, we have to transfer the assets uh, here. So whatever assets are taken over, you will transfer. So goodwill account 31,500, buildings account 150,000, machinery 4,95, stock account, debtors account, cash account. See, when you are passing the journal entries here, here it will be in the agreed values. When you are transferring to Realization account, it will be in the balance sheet value, but when you are transcribing the journal entry, it will be in the agreed value. To 10% debentures account, 1 lakh. To trade creditors, 50,000. To EPF, to business purchase account, 6,61,500. So you add all this. So when you add all this, if there is a difference, that difference will go to the goodwill account being assets and liabilities of Sun Limited taken over. Then next again, we have the goodwill account 15,000 machinery. So this is taking over of the assets of the Moon Limited. So debtors 50,000, then cash 5,000, trade creditors, workmen compensation fund, so total is 3,15,000. Then next, what will be the entry for purchase consideration paid? Now who is receiving the purchase consideration? The liquidator of Sun Limited, liquidator of Moon Limited. So 6,61,500. So 3,15,000 to equity share capital account 9,76,500 being issue of 9,765. Fully paid equity shares in full settlement of purchase consideration. So we have settled the purchase consideration of Sun Limited and Moon Limited. So this will be the journal entries which we have to pass. Now we have to write the opening balance sheet in the books of Star Limited. So whatever assets you have taken over, so that will be added together and written in the asset side the same way the liabilities. Now first thing is since it is a vertical balance sheet, we write the equity and liabilities. So shareholders funds. So this is the authorized share capital which is 20 lakhs. So you will not add it. Then we have the 9,765 equity shares of rupees 100 each. So this is the number of shares which has been issued to the shareholders of Sun Limited and Moon Limited. So the total is 9,76,500. Then reserves and surplus. Then we have the 
10% debentures that is 1 lakh. Then trade payables 80,000, employee provident fund 15,000, employee profit sharing fund. So total is 11 lakh 81,500. Now we have the asset side. Now in the asset side, we have buildings at 1,50,000. See, this is the machinery of Sun Limited. This is the machinery of Moon Limited. Both together I am taking 7,45,000. Then goodwill also 31,500 plus 15,000, 46,500. Current assets also, I am adding the assets of Sun Limited and Moon Limited together. It comes up to 1,12,000. Trade receivable also, Sun Limited and Moon Limited, 1,8,000. Then next we have the provision for bad debts less 5,000. So this, the cash balance is 15,000. So total is 11,81,500. So the type of amalgamation, it is assumed that amalgamation is in the nature of purchase. So method of accounting used in the books of Star, Star Limited is the purchase method. So the problem is silent on whether it is amalgamation in the nature of merger or purchase. So in that case, you can assume as it is a purchase. Then next working note to the balance sheet of Star Limited is prepared accordance with the revised schedule six of the Companies Act of 1956. Then this is the purchase consideration. So the total amount of shares in Sun Limited and Moon Limited by way of purchase consideration is not given. Purchase consideration can be cannot be calculated on the payment basis. So it has to be calculated on the basis of net asset taken over. So we have the calculation of the purchase consideration. So transfer all the assets. So here it will be the agreed values. So we have the two values. So balance sheet values will be taken to the realization account, whereas agreed values will be written for calculation of purchase consideration and when you are writing the journal entries. So when I calculate all this, I get the purchase consideration as 6,61,500 and 3,15,000. So I also calculated the total number of equity shares which has been issued. So with this, we come to the end of this session. Hope you have all followed it. Thank you.